Justin was an archaeologist who explored ancient pyramids. One day, something went wrong, and he ended up locked in a tiny room deep underground. The guy got into the room through a narrow passage. It was blocked by a rock slide several minutes after he'd entered. There was only one other door in the room, but it was locked. To open it, the guy had to solve a riddle. Stand. Try to. After mulling it over for some time, Justin guessed what it meant. Can you? The answer is try to understand. Detective Taylor came to investigate a tricky case. Someone had pushed a famous basketball player down the stairs, and he ended up in a hospital right before an important game. The detective had three suspects, all of them the player's teammates. Connor said he had been cleaning and checking basketballs. Nathan explained that he'd had his lunch, several cheeseburgers, and french fries. After that, he went to train, and Julian told the detective he had been getting a massage. His back hurt. Detective Taylor didn't need much more time to figure out who the culprit was. It was Nathan. No one eats such a big lunch before training. Mark came to visit his friend Thomas in his office. While walking along the corridor, he heard his friend shouting. He ran inside and spotted Thomas standing near a girl who was on the floor. It's my secretary, Linda. I returned from my lunch break and saw her unconscious. Also, my safe was open and very important documents were missing. Another man, Thomas's deputy, entered the room. Whoa! What happened here? I've been away for ten minutes at the most. I just went to buy coffee at the nearest cafe. Suddenly, the girl opened her eyes. Ah! I had such a scare. I was working with documents when someone grabbed me from behind, and then darkness. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't shown up, boss. Mark told Thomas to call the police immediately. Why? If the secretary was unconscious, how did she know it was Thomas who found her? Jack and John are twin brothers. They're robbers, and the police all over the country have been trying to catch them for several years. That's why everyone's happy when one of the brothers gets into a trap after breaking into a wealthy businessman's villa. But police officers have a problem. They can't figure out whether they've caught Jack or John. The brothers are just so similar. The man also refuses to tell them his name. The only thing the detectives know is that Jack always lies, and John always tells the truth. How can they find out who the man is by asking him just one question? The question the police officers need to ask is, "Do you have a brother?" If it's Jack, he'll lie and say no, and if it's John, he'll give a positive answer. Matthew wears either only black or only white socks. One evening, he's in a hurry, getting ready for a romantic dinner with his girlfriend. Suddenly, the power goes out. The guy has ten white and ten black socks in his drawer, but all of them are mixed. If it's completely dark in the room and Matthew can't see anything. How many socks must he pull out of the drawer to get two matching ones? Just three. In a set of three socks, he's bound to have two socks of the same color. Milan Airport Customs officers noticed that one man traveled abroad at least several times a week. They started to suspect he was a smuggler, but couldn't understand what he'd been smuggling. He always had a suitcase or a bag with him, but there was never anything forbidden or expensive inside. Several months later, when a new customs officer joined the team, the mystery was solved. What was it that the man smuggled? He smuggled designer suitcases and bags.
you've gotten trapped in a bizarre room. Shiny, made of metal and with no windows, and it has two doors. One of them leads to freedom. Some danger is looming behind the other. You don't know which door is safe. Two robots guard these doors. They're ready to allow you to leave through one of the doors, but once you choose a door, you can't change your mind. On the bright side, you can ask one of the robots a single question, but one of them always tells the truth, and the second always lies. Again, you don't know which is which. What question should you ask? If I asked the other robot which door was safe, what would it answer? The honest robot is going to tell you the truth and point at the dangerous door. And the liar is gonna lie and also point at the dangerous door. All you need to do is leave through the other door. Look at this guy. He's fallen asleep right behind the wheel of his moving car. And now he's getting out of the vehicle safe and happy. How did he survive? He was traveling in a self-driving car. The future's here, folks. Now, this girl seems to be in grave danger. She probably doesn't notice that a shark is following her in the water. But just a few minutes later, she's already chilling on the beach, drinking a cocktail. How come? It was another swimmer with a fake shark fin. Look, he's taking off his equipment over there. Oh no, this elderly lady is falling from a skyscraper. But now she seems to be safe, wiping sweat off her brow. Can you figure out what's happened here? Luckily, it was just a dream. Behind the lady's back, we can see her bedroom. Ah, a rock slide! And a huge rock is falling right on this guy. I'm gonna cover my eyes. Huh? How on earth did he survive? He's Superman. See that tiny logo on his t-shirt? It's getting more and more nerve-wracking. Now, a wild bear seems to be attacking this man from behind. Wait, and now the man is laughing hard. What made him so happy? It was just another guy in a Halloween costume. Have you noticed this zipper? Ugh, this tightrope seems to be very high above the ground. Watch out, bro! Oh no! He's slipped and fallen from the rope! But in this picture, he looks totally unharmed. What magic is this? This guy is an acrobat performing in a circus, so he fell into a safety net. The manager of a ski resort has gone missing. The police suspect three people that are staying at the hotel. Unfortunately, no one can find any of these people. They're probably on the slopes, skiing. The police officers have no time to waste and decide to examine their rooms. Look at the suspect's stuff and say who's responsible for the disappearance of the manager. It's Joyce. He's the only one who doesn't have warm clothes or winter sports gear and equipment. It means he didn't come to the resort to have some fun. In the 22nd century, robots live among people and it's nothing out of the ordinary. But sometimes they resemble people so much it makes detectives work way harder. Like this time, Eric Blank, an experienced police officer, uh -oh. has to figure out which of these three suspects is guilty of identity theft. He knows for sure the culprit is a robot, but who isn't human? It's the girl in the middle. She has a USB port on the side of her neck. 
Kyle lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. Once, the man was having his coffee on the balcony. Suddenly, he spotted a woman on the eighth floor of the building across the road. She opened the window and threw something with great force. In no more than a minute, Kyle jumped to his feet and ran to call the ambulance. They arrived soon and rushed the woman to a hospital. What did she throw out of the window? A boomerang! John's father has three sons. There's Jack, a quiet, intelligent student. Then there's Jason, a popular athlete. So who's the third son? It's John. His father has three sons, Jack, Jason, and him, John. One day, a teacher decided to give her students a test, but all of them refused to take it. She could give detention for skipping the test to only one student. All of them knew each other's names. If a student knew they were going to get a detention, they agreed to take the test. How could the teacher make all the students participate? She told them that she'd give detention to the student whose name came first alphabetically. Then this person wouldn't skip the test. The next person on the list wouldn't skip as well. And so on until the end of the list. Randy was at home, sitting in his chair with a book. Suddenly, his sister's super expensive vase fell and broke in the living room. He ran there in time to see a stranger jump out of the window and run away. Randy tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold, so he couldn't see the person. When the police arrived, they immediately knew he was lying. He'd broken the vase himself. How did they know? Glasses don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Michael Winston, who dislikes modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet, the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Winston for his actions. How come? Michael was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more exhibits. Look at this line of people at the checkout in a supermarket. They're all a colorful bunch, but one of them is trying to sneak out food out of the store. Can you tell who just by looking at them closely? You might have thought it was the pregnant woman because of the fake tummy, but look! She's wearing comfy sneakers without shoelaces so that she could slip them on easily. The guy in a baggy hoodie sure looks suspicious, but it's not food he's hiding inside his pockets. It's a kitten! And the real culprit is the guy behind him. Look at his sleeves. One of his arms looks way bigger than the other. He must be hiding something in there. A man dressed in black from head to toe was walking in the middle of the road. All of a sudden, a huge black car with its headlights off came around the corner and screeched to a halt, not to hit him. How on earth did the driver of the car see the man in black? Well, the only reasonable answer would be that it was in broad daylight. Nobody said it was nighttime after all. Three college friends met after a summer break and were sharing stories about their vacation. Lily described how she and her boyfriend had gone to Paris and seen the city from the top of the Eiffel Tower. Dylan told his friends that he had traveled to Africa with his parents. But on their last day, there was a massive volcanic eruption and it didn't spoil their vacation only because they flew home that day. And Ellie said that she had visited her uncle in Texas and learned how to ride a horse. One of the stories was fake, though. Which one?
Dylan's story is fake. He couldn't fly home on the day of the eruption because when something like this happens, all flights get canceled. Mark and Amy got stranded on a tiny uninhabited island full of sand and rocks, but not much else. They had no radio or cell phones, and there were no trees on the island to make a smoke signal. Suddenly, Amy noticed a plane circling the sky in search of them. She got a bright idea to make it notice them. Soon after, the plane picked them up. What was Amy's idea? She suggested using rocks to spell out SOS on the sand. Mike was studying for a big test in the school library. It was already late when he finished up and suddenly heard someone shouting for help. The voice was coming from behind a locked classroom door. Mike rushed there and opened it. Inside, there was his classmate, Brad. He told Mike that he'd gone to grab a bite in the cafeteria, only to find it was closed that day. Suddenly, he blacked out. And the next thing he knew, he was locked in the classroom. Mike promised to find out who had done this. By morning, Mike had four suspects in mind. When school started, he interrogated them. Matthew told him he'd been doing his homework in a classroom. Emily said that she'd been with Matthew, but later she'd gone home. Olivia claimed that she'd been having lunch in the cafeteria. And Chris explained that he'd been sick that day. It took Mike no time to figure out who was guilty. It was Olivia. She couldn't have been eating lunch in the cafeteria because it was closed that day. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on the door. She looked through the peephole and saw an unfamiliar man. He said, Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called hotel security. Can you figure out why? The badge on the man's chest says Chloe Smith, and that's a female name. She knew the man was a fake manager. Emma's mother asked the girl to go to the supermarket and gave her a shopping list and a bank card. But in case Emma forgot the card's pin, her mom also gave her a little clue. When Emma was already at the checkout, she took the clue out of her pocket and immediately recalled the code. Can you say what number it was if the clue was a sheet of paper with a fly, a cat, a girl, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Emma just had to count the number of legs of each creature. Littlefield was a tiny village where nothing ever happened. But one day, Mr. Richardson, a rich farmer, arrived at the police station in tears, saying that two of his best cows were missing. There were three suspects, and each of them had to answer one question. Have you taken your neighbor's animals? Mr. Anderson said that he and Mr. Richardson had a common business and that he wouldn't risk their partnership. Mrs. Martinez stated that she'd been living in this village since birth and she wouldn't spoil her reputation because of some animals. And Mr. Jones explained that his family had been breeding pigs for centuries and he didn't have any reason to steal cows. The police officer figured out who the criminal was. Can you? The thief is Mr. Jones. How did he know that it was cows that were stolen? Nobody had told him the animal species. A woman was having breakfast at a nice restaurant. At one moment, she noticed a fly in her coffee. She was indignant and made the waiter bring her another cup. After he returned with a new cup of coffee, she shouted, What's with this service in this place? You've just brought me the same cup of coffee. How did she understand it? She had already put sugar in her previous cup of coffee. When she tried the new one, 
It was sweet. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and see that it's more than half full. But your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches its rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Oliver was attacked in his flat and taken to the hospital. There are four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Wow, I'd find another apartment. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he had been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he had been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who's lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who was repairing his car, and Henry, who was painting, both have such clean hands. But they could be wearing gloves. On the other hand, Sophia's hands and fingers don't have wrinkles. But it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. Sophia, you've been caught red, I mean, smooth-handed. The police found out there was a new smuggler in town. Three people were under suspicion. Luna, a school bus driver, Jackson, a fire truck driver, and Daniel, an ambulance driver. All of them claim to have been busy with their work since the very morning. Can you figure out who's the smuggler? Look at the car Daniel drives. On such vehicles, the word ambulance is normally written backward. It's done so that other drivers can instantly read the inverted word in their rearview mirrors. Well, it seems Daniel has given himself away. It was the day when Jacob was supposed to be discharged from the hospital. He had spent a couple of months there and underwent several surgeries. His doctor told him he was going to be fine. It was safe for Jacob to leave the hospital. But the guy didn't believe these promises. In low spirits, he walked home. On the way, he accidentally bumps into an elderly lady. She gets furious and started to shout at Jacob. But instead of arguing back, he hugged the woman and ran home. Why? Jacob had hearing loss. He didn't believe his problem could be helped. But when he heard the woman shouting at him, he realized the doctor had told him the truth. Maybe the doctor should have shouted. <laughs> Chloe stayed late at the office that day. When she was driving home, the woman was worn out. At one moment, she even started to doze off. That's when it happened. She spun off the road and crashed through the fence that was on her way. She couldn't control the car anymore. It slipped down a steep hill and ended up in a lake. Chloe couldn't move her arms, they were stuck. She couldn't undo her seatbelt or open the door. The car sank to the bottom of the lake. Was Chloe doomed? Rescuers arrived three hours later. The woman was still in the car, but she was alive. How did she survive? After the car hit the bottom of the lake, the water only came up to Chloe's throat. It was a very shallow lake. Good thing, huh? It was Jack's birthday, and the fellow got a present he had been dreaming about for ages. A motorbike. The next morning, he rode his bike to college and left it at the parking lot. During lunchtime, Jack decided to check on his motorbike. Imagine his horror when he found out someone had broken the mirrors. The security guard told Jack, only three other people had left his building in the afternoon. They were Owen and Sam, two best friends, and Layla, the girl who once liked Jack but got turned down by him. Owen said he and Sam had gone to the campus cafe to get sandwiches for lunch. Sam confirmed this. 
He then added the bike could have been damaged by Layla out of revenge. But Layla told Jack her mother had visited her and they had spent two hours together. So who's lying? Owen has a paper bag with food delivery written on it. It means the guys ordered their lunch, not bought it in the cafe. They broke Jack's mirrors and tried to frame Layla. Not a good reflection on them, huh? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. Oh no, there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining and the criminal left footprints on the hospital floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there, all covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It was the dude in the middle. He didn't even have a medical chart next to his bed. Very quick job on the bandages, though. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to their competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. By the time they were back, Victoria had already been sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Yep, Victoria and her sticky bun. (laughs) Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When he regained consciousness, he found out he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to write the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the needed word, and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Oh, I was guessing a buzzsaw, but this one is better, and not as messy. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Both hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. A man on a bike grabbed Sarah's bag with all her documents, money, and smartphone and sped off. The only way the girl can get her bag back is by taking someone's car and driving after the criminal. There are three vehicles parked nearby. Which one can Sarah break into and drive off, whoops, I mean, borrow? A man is sitting in the blue car. That's no good. If she decides to take the red car, CCTV will spot her. Her only option is the brown vehicle. Oh, and Sarah, don't forget to return the wheels when you get your bag back, otherwise you'll be Grand Theft Sarah. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. Wait, mushroom hunting? What do you do, sneak up on them so they don't escape? Anyway, they started to quarrel. Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. 
She was still fuming, but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Um, did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? So, where's Alex? Kidnapped by the escaped mushrooms? We may never know. Ella came to a party that took place in her best friend's house. It was a riddle party. All the guests had to crack mysteries and participate in different challenges. Ella's task was to get out of a locked room in the basement. The girl was blindfolded, taken downstairs, and left alone. After pulling the piece of cloth off her eyes, Ella noticed the door had a code lock. She also spotted a sheet of paper lying on the floor next to the door. There were four flowers drawn there. Ella looked at them for a while and entered the correct code. The door opened and the girl joined the party. So what was the code? Ella counted the petals on each flower. The code was 5748. Carter was visiting his friend Matteo, who lived in another city. Matteo loved riddles. In the evening, he challenged Carter to get the key to the guest room where the guy was supposed to be sleeping. Matteo dropped the key in the bucket filled with cold water and told Carter to get it. But he couldn't touch the water or use anything to pull the key out. That night, Carter slept in the guest room. How did he get the key? He put the bucket over a fire. The water started to boil and soon evaporated. After that, Carter picked the key up. Matteo was steamed. Nora was an insurance agent. Once, her client called her early in the morning. The woman was in tears. At night, someone had broken into her house. By the time the woman had enough courage to go downstairs, the thief had already taken all the valuables. When she looked out of the window, the man was running away. Do you remember what he looked like? Nora asked. The client answered, It was still dark outside. I understood it was a man, tall and thin. He had dark hair and was wearing a v-neck t-shirt. Nora immediately realized her client has staged the burglary. How did she figure it out? It was dark, and the man was running away from the client's house. Then how could the woman see he was wearing a v-neck t-shirt? Beats me. Wow, Bella landed in New York with very ambitious career goals. There were many options to get from the airport to the center of the city. But Bella decided to save money and go by bus. She had to purchase a ticket for $10. But a handsome guy popped out of nowhere and offered her a better deal. Hey, my plans have changed and I don't need my bus ticket anymore. Want to buy it for $6? Bella agreed and gave him $6. It was a big mistake. Why? Take a look at the current date on the screen of the vending machine. And now check the date on the ticket. It expired a decade ago. Finally, Bella arrived in Manhattan and found her hostel. She had booked a bed in a dormitory room. Bella had to share it with three other women. She left her backpack on her bed and went to take a shower. When Bella returned, she found out that someone had stolen her laptop. She questioned her roommates. Sarah said, I was drinking some coffee in the lobby. Ask the manager. Kelly said, I was sleeping with my earplugs in and my sleep mask on, so I didn't see or hear anything. And Chelsea said that she had been taking pictures on the roof of the hostel. Who's lying?
Chelsea. Do you see the sign? The hostel rules strictly prohibit guests from going up to the roof. In the evening, at around 8 p.m., Bella got very hungry. She went out to get some food. She found a cozy restaurant. As soon as Bella entered, she witnessed a heated argument between a waiter and a customer. The customer claimed to have ordered tomato soup, and the waiter claimed that he'd only ordered hot chocolate. Bella realized which of them was lying right away. What about you? The client is lying. This advertisement on the wall says the restaurant only serves soups from 1 to 4 p.m. This means that the waiter simply wouldn't have accepted such an order. Bella ordered dinner. While waiting, she looked around and noticed one weird detail. Can you spot it too? This guy is using tree leaves instead of money to pay for his meal. The waiter served Bella her meal. She was about to start eating when two ladies began arguing about their VIP reservation. Julia claimed that she had reserved the VIP room in advance to celebrate her wedding anniversary. And Letitia said, No way! It's my birthday party tonight! I called the manager yesterday, and he promised me the VIP room. The manager said, Ladies, I'm so sorry, but the booking system crashed and deleted both of your reservations. The VIP room is unavailable today. Can I do anything else for you? Who's lying here? The manager. Take a look at the screen. Julia's reservation is still there. He lied because Letitia had given him huge tips to get the VIP room without any reservation. See? Boy, this is a crazy restaurant. The food better be worth it. After dinner, Bella saw Letitia in the ladies' room. She was crying. Bella asked her, what happened? Letitia didn't say anything. She just gave Bella her phone and showed this chat with her boyfriend. Can you tell what made Letitia so upset? Her boyfriend didn't come to her birthday party. Even worse, he lied that his mom was ill to visit a pool party. Take a look at the reflection in his sunglasses. It seems that he's having fun. Letitia was so grateful for Bella's support that she gave up her VIP opera tickets. Their performance was scheduled for the next day. Now, Bella needed to find an evening dress. She headed to a shopping mall with Kelly and Sarah. But as soon as they arrived, they noticed something very weird. Can you see it too? This mannequin has three arms. Can you spot what's wrong here? The outfit sizes don't match the sizes on the hangers. What about the dressing room? Any odd details? These hairy clawed paws can't belong to a human. Finally, Bella found a beautiful evening gown for the opera, but it cost $97. Bella couldn't afford it, so she borrowed $50 from Kelly and $50 from Sarah, which equaled $100. She bought the dress and got $3 of change. Bella gave $1 to Kelly and $1 to Sarah and kept the last dollar for herself. So now, Bella owes $49 to Kelly and $49 to Sarah, which equals $98. 
If we add the dollar that Bella took, we'll get $99. But then, one dollar is missing. Where is it? First of all, we're led to believe that one dollar is missing. According to the conditions of the riddle, Bella took $50 from Kelly and $50 from Sarah. So the sum of her debt was $100. After that, she bought a dress for $97 and got $3 of change. The total indeed equals 100. But the question itself offers us a mathematically impossible puzzle. In fact, there is no missing dollar. Bella's debt remains $98 because she had already given $2 to her friends. And it's incorrect to add Bella's $1 to this debt. Next, Bella decided to visit a hairdresser. The manager asked her to wait for 20 minutes. Bella took a seat in the lobby and accidentally fell asleep. When she woke up, she saw that someone had cut her long, beautiful hair. She got furious and questioned three suspects. Maya said that she'd been busy with another customer. She didn't see what was going on in the lobby. Rick said that he had been eating his lunch outdoors. And Sally said, Who do you think I am? I don't steal hair. That's ridiculous. Who is lying? Both Maya and Sally have some cut hair on their clothes. But that doesn't prove their guilt. But Rick's lunchbox is full of food, which means that he was busy with something else during his lunch break. Mmm, very suspicious. Bella's evening dress was too long and classy. She couldn't go to the concert hall by subway. So the hostel manager, Fred, offered Bella to give her a ride if she cracked his tricky riddle. I have no neck and no head. Two arms, but no hands. I'm with you at school, I'm with you at work. What am I? The correct answer is a shirt. During a break, Bella went outside to get some fresh air. She enjoyed the evening along with other guests. Suddenly, a street dealer offered Bella a diamond necklace for 20 bucks. She agreed right away and put the necklace on. Soon, three guests came over to Bella to claim the necklace. Pam said, How dare you! This necklace has been in my family for ages. I lost it in the ladies' room. Diana said, This piece looks very similar to my necklace. Someone stole it as I was moving through the crowd today. In any case, my jewelry collection is insured. And Sheila said, I noticed that the necklace was gone after visiting the buffet on the sixth floor. Can you help Bella return the necklace to its real owner? The necklace belongs to Diana. The concert hall doesn't have six floors. Pam and the street dealer have similar tattoos on their arms, so they must be scammers working together. After the performance, Letitia invited Bella to the after party, where Bella met Tyler. He claimed he was a famous violinist and showed Bella some pictures proving his luxurious lifestyle. But Bella realized that he was just a wannabe very soon. How did she understand it? Take a look at the trees in this picture. It's obvious that the wind is blowing to the right. Meanwhile, Tyler's hair seems to be swept to the left. The picture has been photoshopped. The next morning, Bella went to buy some groceries. She didn't have much cash, so she bought only two items, cheese and bread, and paid $1.10 in total. The cheese cost $1 more than the bread. So, how much did the bread cost?
The most obvious answer would be that the bread cost 10 cents. But if the bread cost 10 cents, and the price of the cheese was $1 higher than that of the bread, the cheese would cost $1.10. And the total, in this case, would be $1.20. The correct answer is that the bread costs 5 cents, and the cheese costs $1.05. This indeed makes a total of $1.10. Does that make sense? I mean, sense? After breakfast, Bella went to a job interview. The HR manager asked her to solve this riddle. She wanted to see how quick-witted Bella was. I am the only place in the world where today comes before yesterday. What am I? Bella cracked this riddle easily. What about you? The correct answer is the dictionary. Bella got a job as a train conductor. On her first day at work, she entered a rail car to check the passengers' tickets. There were only three people inside, and only two of them were human. Can you tell who's not human? The first guy is dressed up too warmly for the summer, but he could be going to a place where it's very cold. That lady over there is drinking some green liquid. It's a bit strange, but there are plenty of colorful drinks in the world. As for this guy in the middle, he doesn't cast a shadow. 